Oh, yeah, here we go. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Okay. I think we're all set up. Uh, and I think we're good to start. Here should be everybody. Great. Hi, welcome. I am Tom, and I'm going to get you guys started in the wonderful world of 3D printing. I will say one thing really quick. Yep. Uh, there's a water cooler in the back. If you're thirsty, we have to use mugs as soon as you go back to the kitchen and turn your head. There's a whole lot of mugs. And the restroom is out the door. Make a left and make a left. Perfect. Um, so it sounds like everyone here is, is brand new to 3D printing, which is great. Um, because that's how I design my presentation. Um, so let's get started here. Uh, I can figure out the computer. Oh, nope. The screen's too big. That one. There we go. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to show you First, I'm going to get into what exactly is a 3D printer, how does it work, and what can we actually do with it. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys Ender 3, which is the printer that Eastern Edge has. Um, and there's a bit of safety concerns to talk about. It's pretty simple stuff, but I uh, just want to make sure no one gets burnt because they do get hot. <clears throat> and then after that, we're going to go through how to take a 3D model in your computer and turn it into a printable file. And the last thing I'm going to go through is bed leveling. Uh, this is the most important thing for 3D printers. If your print is uh, having any trouble with it, um, we'll see why towards the end. Uh, so I wanted to make sure to include that. Uh, a friend of mine actually suggested that I just do this work workshop as 15 bed leveling tutorials in a row. It's that important. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, what is 3D printing? Um, basically, there are tools that turn raw material, usually plastic, into three-dimensional objects. Uh, but there's a lot of different kinds of printers. Most of them do plastic, like I said, but some of them can do metal. Others can do um, like wood. It's sort of a wood-filled uh, resin material um, and many, many other types. Um, but basically, the way I like to think about it is 3D printers are a great tool for turning your ideas into reality. <clears throat> um, most printers do plastic, like I said, um, and basically it, it heats it up and pushes it through a nozzle until it's molten. So you've got melted plastic coming out of the end. Basically the same way a glue gun works. You push plastic through, it melts. After it goes through, uh, it hardens again. But the difference between a print printer and a glue gun is just that the mechanism so it can very accurately place where that material is coming out so once you have that it just builds up a layer of plastic one at a time on top of each other until you've got your your uh, 3d printed part and it cools pretty quickly as it comes out so once it's uh, fully printed you're you're good to go you've got a 3d printed part so as for what kinds of things we can print, uh, these are pretty common sort of uh, objects that people like to print. Uh, a lot of pop culture stuff, like you can see here, Baby Yoda and the little Roctopus. Um, <laughs> and then we've got other things like uh, those, those planters down there. Um, those are flexible or articulated dragons up there and, and some turtles. Um, and mostly just decorative stuff. A lot of people like to print that. Um, and I've actually got a few of my own stuff that I've printed on display over there. Um, the, the red thing is a, a watering jug for plants. A little small, but it works. Um, and there's a little figurine from Spirited Away, the movie. A uh, little dumpster. Um, and a couple of my own designs, little pedestals that hold dice, because I'm a big nerd and I'm really into magic cards. <laughs> Um, but it's not, not just decorative stuff. Uh, a lot of people print really functional things. So you can see like uh, a battery dispenser, uh, someone even 3D printed a cast. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, their leg is actually broken, but you could print a cast and it would work just as well as plaster. Um, arguably better because if you have the right 
3D scanner, you can actually scan someone's leg and make a better cast fit, that fits their leg better. Um, and other more simple things like this clamp here, this bag holder, um, little latch there. So those are the pretty common things you'll see around, but that's not all the 3D printing has to offer. Um, so this one here for, is a kinetic sculpture and everything you see here is 3D printed. Back down a bit. Uh, everything is printed except for this motor down here and some screws. Um, that's pretty interesting. So <clears throat> that one play a little more. I think they do a, a faster one later. Yeah. So there's all, all sorts of interesting kinetic sculptures out there um, that are mostly 3D printed. Um, there we go. Uh, and you can also do lithophanes with um, 3D printing. Uh, so if, if you're not familiar with lithophanes, it's where the thickness of an object creates a monochrome image when you um, shine a light behind it. And that moon sitting on top there is actually a lithophane 3D printed moon. Uh, it's not the most stunning thing with the being right in front of the projector, but especially in the dark, which is why I wanted the lights off, uh, it looks really, really nice. <coughs> and it, it's a good example of com combining 3D printed objects with non-3D printed things like lights. Uh, and you can also 3D print almost like a fabric material. So this person here, my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, this person's made like this chain mail kind of material um, and all that, that all prints as one piece, you don't need to assemble that yourself. You just pull it off the printer. Uh, and this one's got some flat, very thin pieces with some thicker ones to make a kind of hexagon lattice material. Um, next one is, is my favorite one. So that again prints as all one piece and you just take it off the printer and it's, it's flexible like a, a, a fabric. Um, it's just a little demonstration of how the printing works, I think. That's actually a good demonstration of how the printing in general, you see that's the build plate and it builds it up layer by layer. You can even overhang. We'll get more into that later. Um, but then some of the more interesting things as well is that when you're 3D printing the the printed object doesn't necessarily have to be the final goal. Right here, this person has made a 3D printed mold to cast ceramic uh, cups or vases out of. So they cast the, the 3D printed piece in, in silicone, then cast that again in some harder material. And there you go, you can make ceramic mugs. You can do that with um, resin as well. Anything you can cast, you can use 3D printing somewhere along the way to make the mold for it. So there's a lot of applications besides just 3D printing plastic parts. And then something that I, I use uh, myself a lot is 3D printed woodworking jigs. So this person has printed this little corner rounding jig for the router um, that lets them put a nice corner on things. Uh, that one's a, a pretty simple one, but you can print in woodworking. You often need very, very weird, intricate jigs. Um, and now you can just print them. If you can model it, you can print it. So lots of applications where the final result is not printed. And then beyond that, so everything you've seen up to now, the Ender 3 could actually print, um, but I'll show you some of the even more interesting things out there. Um, 3D printed food. This one, I would eat this. It's 
I think they're making some kind of pastry. Um, yeah, I'd try it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that technology is basically only in, in a lab somewhere in a university right now. But I would not be surprised if in the next five to 10 years, we'd be able to print food ourselves or eat printed food at restaurants. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, but that, you can also print houses. This one prints concrete and the printer is bigger than a house. So it just goes along with a bead of concrete and makes all the walls. And uh, you fill it in with windows and insulation and, and trim and stuff. And there you go, a whole house. You can print just about anything. I'll let this one play a bit because it, it's pretty interesting watching it go. And this is a, exactly the same process as the Ender 3 that Eastern Edge has, just scaled up to an enormous scale. Um, so it just builds it up layer by layer uh, with concrete instead of plastic. And then here, an even another example, these people are printing with metal. This is a company that's making a um, 3D, fully 3D printed rocket. This is a time lapse, but uh, it's basically a welder on the end of a computer controlled arm that just goes around and around making the, um, making the walls of the printer. But the single most impressive thing that anyone has ever printed, you're about to see next. Get this to cooperate. 3D printed cat armor. <laughs> it does not get more advanced than this. And the Ender 3 should be able to print a, a good set of cat armor. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you could apply this to dogs as well. It scales very nicely. So as you can see, pretty much the sky's the limit with printing. Um, you can print little knickknacks, hobby stuff, uh, decorative things, sculptures, um, houses, anything. So that will bring us into uh, Eastern Edge's printer. This is the Ender 3. So most of the things you just saw are printable on this printer, like I said. It's really just the food, the house, and the rocket that you can't print. Anything, you can print anything up to 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters in size. Um, it's going to take a while to print something that's going to take the, the full volume, but uh, it'll get there. And you can also print, there's no reason you have to limit yourself to that size. You could print things in multiple pieces and then glue them together or screw them together, fasten them somehow. Um, this one prints two materials really well, uh, and other materials you may have to play around with. Uh, they're PLA and PETG, which are, I'll get into more later, but their PLA is probably what you will all want to start with. It's a very good beginner material, easy to print with. Um, and all of that stuff on the table is printed with PLA. Uh, and they're just different types of plastics. Um, but one of the really nice things about this printer specifically is it's very widespread in the 3D printing community. Um, so you'll have a lot of people online to help you if you run into any problems using it. Um, it's, it's a very, very widespread, helpful community. It's probably millions of those out in the, out in the world now. And just a quick uh, rundown of the, the parts in it. So this is a nozzle, like I said earlier, that's where the uh, material is melted and pushed through. Um, this motor, you can barely see it back here, is the extruder. So that pushes the material through this tube down into the nozzle. Um, and then you've got this part called the gantry. Uh, and the nozzle here moves back and forth on the gantry. And the gantry itself moves up and down. Um, and then the bed here is what 
uh, the nozzle prints on top of, and that moves forward and back. So between the bed moving forward and back, the nozzle moving side to side, and the gantry moving up and down, you can put that nozzle anywhere you need to on this printer, or the, the printer can put the nozzle. You don't actually have to do very much of that. Uh, and then besides that, there's just the, the power switch to turn it on. Uh, this is the control panel here, uh, which uh, we can play through the, uh, the settings on the menu over there later. Um, and the SD card slot here, which is where you put your files into print. It's all pretty basic. Uh, for safety, um, it's just important to note that this part here, the nozzle, that can get up to 200 degrees. So you definitely don't wanna to touch that. Um, that'll burn you pretty quick. Uh, the build plate, that one can get up to 70 or 80 degrees. So it'd be like a really hot cup of coffee. So you just wanna be careful about that as well. Uh, but also this has moving parts that are controlled by a computer. So it doesn't know if your hand is underneath the gantry. So if it's moving, Keep your hands clear of it uh, or else it could pinch or hurt. Um, luckily, it moves very slow. So if, you're, if you are in there getting a print out and it starts moving, you will have plenty of time to get your hands out. Just be careful is all. Okay, so now that's just a, a demo of what we can do with 3D printing. So now I'd like to get everyone to actually uh, find a model and print something with it. So this is, this is a basic representation of the, the way printing works. You start with a 3D model uh, and you put it into a software called a slicer. And that takes the model and breaks it up into these horizontal layers. Um, and will also generate the file that you put in your printer so it can start printing. You see that's the nozzle building it up layer by layer. Uh, does everyone have Cura installed? Uh, does anyone not have it installed? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can just take a few minutes. Uh, um, the, everyone should have the Wi-Fi, but if you don't, Rachel can help you out. Um, it'll only take a second to download, and we'll do all the setup now in a second. I'll actually. Uh... Oh no. Okay. It's on there. Oh, okay. My version is a little old. So I think I'll also be downloading the latest version. So for anyone that doesn't have it, um, C-U-R-A, uh, Ultimaker is the, the company that makes this program, free to download. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to download it myself here because it looks like they've made a new version since I last updated mine. Get used to this enormous screen. And anyone who already has Kira downloaded, uh, is anyone having trouble opening it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is that doing? You're like a 50%. Okay. Yeah. That 
corner of the screen is just out of my reach. Um, Okay. Yeah. And is your uh, is your download going okay? Yeah. And, there, and no one else, no one else needs to download it, do they? Okay. Perfect. Looks like twenty two seconds left for me. I think. So while that's downloading, I'll just move on here. <clears throat> um, so the first thing you're going to need um, before you get into Cura is actually a 3D model that you want to print. Um, so where do you get these models? Um, most of the things on that table you see are downloaded from a website called Thingiverse. It's one of a lot of different uh, online communities that are just large repositories of um, 3D printable files uploaded by the community. So er, this is Thingiverse here, a screenshot of it. Um, and you can see there's all sorts of different things to print. There's a Pokeball, a little crab to hold your pen, uh, some functional th things like the shelf, um, anything you could imagine, basically. Someone has designed it, modeled it, put it on Thingiverse for you to download. Printables is another one that's very similar. Um, and then also NASA and the Smithsonian Institute, they have a lot of 3D scans of like planets for NASA and artifacts for the Smithsonian that they make available um, for you to download and print. Or you don't have to print it, you can just download it, but <clears throat> it's fun to print them. So you could actually make replicas of artifacts in the Smithsonian for your own home. It's a wonderful future that we live in. Okay, so I'll just come back to that. So the other option, if, you, uh, if you're into 3D modeling at all, you can obviously make the model yourself. Um, this is a program called Onshape. That's the one I like to use. And it's a little hard to see, but this is actually a model I designed. It's a little pyramid that holds a 20-sided a, a die, uh, and it's sitting right there in front of the moon, the little blue one. And that one's free to use. Um, Fusion 360, SketchUp, and Blender, they're also really common programs that people like to use. Um, they're all free to some extent. Um, some of them you can only get a trial. Some of them, it's like you can only save so many models. But there's a plenty of free options. Uh, and lastly, the model that you want to put into the slicer um, has to be in STL format. So usually anything you'll find on Thingiverse or anyone online talking about 3D printing, they'll give it to you in STL. Um, OBJ is a, another one, but less, less common. And most pro programs can convert between them. Um, so while I go on Thingiverse.com, um, I'll go back, back so you can see how it's spelled. And we can all just look through and try and find a, a model that you'd like to print. Because what I'd like to do here is get everyone to pick out a model online, slice it, and make a printing file. Then you can either come back and print it yourself, or you can send it to Rachel, and she'll print it for you. And you'll all get to actually have your own 3D printed uh, little object. So I'll just open that up and show you what the, the website looks like. Uh, that is not how it's spelled. Don't do what I did. There we go. Yeah, so why don't everyone take uh, five minutes or so and and just have a look through this site. You can usually the more popular ones um, are just on display right here. You can just browse right through. They've got a little bit of everything. 
and I will make sure my Cura is updated. I'll pick something out so I can walk you through it on the screen. Oops, that is all the way at the end. Where is that? Oh, <laughs> looks like it, yeah. <laughs> so this one might be a little tricky to print on the ender because it's not flat on the bottom, but I'll show you how to get around that if anyone wants to print uh, something like this. Looks like they have a flat version as well. <laughs> yeah, so this, this site is great because anyone can just model something and print it uh, or, and, and upload it for anyone else to print. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fun things on there. I'm gonna go with this capybara tank because that looks pretty funny. And everything here is free to download. Um, you have the option to tip the designer if you want to, but you don't have to. You can download as much as you want for free. I'm just gonna get it down there. There we go. <clears throat> Everyone's got Thingiverse open. Good. Oh, and everything you download from Thingiverse will come uh, zipped, so you just need to extract it. Um, I'm not sure how that works on Mac, but I'm sure Mac users know. So, and here is the unzipped file. Come on. Let's go. Hmm. Didn't want to unzip for me for some reason, so I'll go with this one instead. So once everyone's got a model picked out, um, go ahead and open up Cura, and then we'll run through the slicing process. <clears throat> and all of this, uh, all of this process is in my presentation as well. I'm going to switch over to screen sharing. Um, but the presentation will be available for anyone who wants it to download from Eastern Edge's website later. Uh, so it should be a good reference for when you're printing at home or making print files at home. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I can't see that I have a printer screen. I can't, I can't see you bringing the files into the program until I have a printer. Oh, yes. Good point. We're going to have to add the printer first. Uh, it's opening on my end, so... I'll show everyone how to do that once it opens. It's taking a little while. So did, did you say the add printer screen comes up automatically? Yeah, and there's no way of getting past it to 
<laughs> oh, it looks like mine uh, carried over my old settings. Okay, well, I'll show everyone how to add the printer now then. Uh, does everyone have Kira open? Oh, <laughs> Charlie. I'm going to see if I can sharpen this corner. I don't think I can. Uh, how did you add the printer? Oh, we're just about to do that. Mine is already added because yeah. uh, I use it at home, but for I can still run everyone through the same process. Uh, I think that's fine. I think, yeah, that looks a bit better. So does everyone see this screen for adding a printer? OK, so what you want to do is click Add Non-Networked Printer. And then you should see this big list here. Um, everyone see the list? OK. Uh, and you just scroll down to Creality. Uh, that's sensitive scroll wheel. Should be in alphabetical order. Uh, yep, Creality 3D right here. So then all of these printer, all of these are printers that the company Creality makes. Um, and the one you want is Creality Ender 3 slash Ender 3 V2. They're both the same um, settings for those. Anyone not uh, get to this point? Okay. Do you need uh, do you need help? Just oh okay. So I should be able to count. Okay. Um, that oh, no. Yeah. Uh, and it just hit skip on that. There is no So once you select that, uh, you hit add or next, depending on Windows or Mac, it looks like. <clears throat> so all of this is just just the, the shape and size of your printer. That'll all come in automatically. You don't need to change any of that. Just hit next again. And now you've added your printer. So up here in the top corner is where your printer added another one before this. And then now it should say Creality Ender 3 slash Ender 3 V2. So now we are ready to start slicing. So you can find your model that you want to print. I've got this little crap here. And you just drag that right in. There you go. The one that I took has two pieces. Okay. You can, can drag both of them in. Both of them in. Yeah. Can I just curious what it is? Yeah, so if you've got multiple pieces, just drag them all in. Um, 
<clears throat> and you can arrange them on the bed here. So does everyone have their uh, on the window here like this? Yep. Okay. Sorry. They had me. Is it still uh, zip? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little annoying when they come in and zip file, but I guess that's the only way to get multiple files at once. So, what if we're the image folder? Uh, no, uh, go back. So there should be one called files. Yeah. So yeah, what you're looking for .stl files. And is it still, oh, it's, it's still open. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, so if you just uh, right click anywhere there. Uh, actually, in the white space. Right click anywhere and then drag, and that shows what was in that. I think he's going to do that. Yeah, did you, uh, did you run zip? Oh, okay. I'm not really sure how it works in that. Um, do you want to get into there? Yeah. Uh, Can you go to uh, here and now? With the, with the file that you have? Here? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, not that, sorry. Well, because it would be. Uh, Oh, yeah, it looks like it needs access to it. Okay, so if you go to downloads uh, and then find the folder that we just downloaded. All right, should I put the on one? You can you can branch more than one at a time. Um, Yeah, that, that looks right to me. There's like a left and a right yeah, side. Yeah, there was the Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that looks perfect to me. <laughs> Anyone else need any help getting the model in? Good. Okay. Okay, so now I'll show you all the settings. Uh, I'm going to need to this bigger somehow. I can't quite read this. <clears throat> There we go. I can see better on this side. So up in this top corner is where all your settings are going to be. Um, and the way Cure works is once you add a printer, it'll actually add a bunch of preset profiles. So each of these profiles corresponds to a, a layer um, for your print. So what you want to do is just Pick any one of these and it'll work. The, uh, the smaller the layer height, um, the longer it will take to print. Uh, and that layer height, remember how I said earlier, it builds up, it slices into layers and then builds that up one at a time. That's the thickness of that layer. So the smaller the layer height, the more layers, the longer it's going to take, but the smoother your part will be in the end. Can I ask you? Yeah. Where is 
I know there's some sign, but my screen is different. Yeah, I guess they're a little different on that. Another reference that I don't know what person. Oh, I've got some of them. 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 Can you put preferences? I think it just skip it here. Um, Absolutely. Oh, it's actually, yeah. All these uh, settings like this. Perfect. Okay, so three main settings. Settings you want to For our layer height, um, so we'll start with layer height. Like I said, it's pretty good for most uses, but if your printing has a lot of curvature, you want to go to a small one. But most people should be able to. Um, okay. I pause everybody. I'm trying to see what you do. No, okay. Yeah, we're here to learn. Uh, so from profile, you can pick layer height, the higher quality, the longer you take uh, So I'd say everyone should start with 0 0.2. Uh, next up, I'll give everyone a second. And that will go with infill. So what infill is, is it's basically how much of the inside of your model is filled with plastic. Most of them are actually mostly hollow. So but you could go fully solid or completely hollow. Um, and we're actually going to... Everyone... Under... Sorry, where's that? Yeah, under infill here, the infill tab. Infill density, just set that to 20. It should already be 20 by default. Um, and... Matter which one you pick right now. You'll see what that does now. Whatever one you feel like out of this. I am going to go with triangles. <clears throat> and then lastly is, which is the really easy to print material. 200 is a good number, and 50 degrees. I'm going to change. Change that to 60. I find 60 degrees works best for the Ender 3.
So if you print set both of those to those numbers, you're good. I have a question. Yeah. Um, my line is I Is it? Thanks. No, it shouldn't. Okay. I see. Yeah. So like this is the comment. Yeah. That's it. Like yep. So once everyone's got all that done, you can order this button called Slice. Just hit the button? Yep, just press the button called Slice. And it should give a little print. Okay, print. So zoom on that. There's a little slider off to the side, and you can actually scroll down through the print layers. Just like that. So this is from the bottom up. Oh, that's how it's actually going to build your part. Change it. So I'm going to change triangle and then and then we'll hit slice again. And when it zigzags, kind of boring. <laughs> so a lot of these these patterns don't. matter that much. Uh, a lot of them are just in there because the designers have no pattern, no structure. Yeah, yeah. If you saw, but ooh, that one's weird. <laughs> if it's completely hollow, the problem is that um, by the time you get to the top, it's just going to want to sag down in on itself. So you need to Some kind of structure in most prints up uh, fine with zero window. <clears throat> number. You can go a little lower, a little higher. If printing um, a leg for a piece of furniture, you want that to be really high, to like 50 to 100 percent. But for anything decorative like this. For example, that's only 15 or 20 percent. You want to take the, the thing you got and make it slightly bigger to make it yep. Yep. Uh, you use these. Um, your, your model bigger or smaller, click on your model, and then all these things on the side will open up. So this second one down is called scale, and that's where you change the size. <clears throat> so you can enter as a percentage. So say you want to make it 50% size, it'll just go down. You can also length or width, depending on which box you want to fill. And then a third way to do it, once you're on the scale tab, you can grab the slot sliders and just make it bigger or smaller like that. And
and it'll automatically bring it back up or down uh, to the build plate. Just like that. The side, like if you want to rotate it, um, you can rotate it around. Usually that doesn't really matter too much, but if you're printing a lot of things at once and you want to pack them in time, Tightly, you might have the base Petrus sit all in the place. Um, there's a few other more advanced. If I want this one's kind of symmetric, so it doesn't really matter. This mirror tool on the left side. Fourth one. Okay. All right. So the last one I want to show you before we get going here. Uh, see how the bottom of this is and the side here is a bit red. Um, what that's telling us is that those areas are overhanging a bit, um, which the printer doesn't really have to do because as it prints over the There's this. Add. Called support. And all you got to do is click their options, but usually you can just accept those as a. There you go. And go to Arial, this blue stuff here. Um, but the model you want and the support to keep it off. <clears throat> um, so you may not have any like large red sections that should be visible in the prepare pack. Uh, that oh, that one's perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, that's the layer heat. So it, it slices it up into the horizontal layers. Okay. And the thickness of each layer is set. <laughs> Yeah. And now, oh, there is the possibility of coming back, like I've listed here, and back to 
kind of see how the underside of the model oh, is. Yeah, yeah, the filament. Mm -hmm. um, you can pause it, but then sometimes you pause it and resume it. Okay, for the most part, it's fine. Um, and then it's like, and then when you go back to your preview windows, you'll see material that holds up that centerpiece. Lots of positions there. Are these in this way? So has everyone uh, saved their G code? Yep. Yeah. Everyone's got G code? Perfect. So we can actually print one person's spot today. And everyone else can come back later or just email them to, um, to Rachel and she can print them for you. Uh, 
when you paper scissors or <laughs> yep so i uh, okay, so is ever save that wherever you like. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. Just going to uh, put in the printer. All right. Yeah, we can actually print one right now. So this is the uh, actually comes off the printer, so you can just kind of bend it. Mm -hmm. and then you can print right off. Yeah. Okay. So all this stuff that I just went over is available on the presentation, like I said, so you can download it later and uh, go through it again if, if you need. on anything. <clears throat> These are, this is actually a nice picture of all the different infill options um, and like, uh, which is even funnier. <laughs> Some of these are just the programmers showing off, seeing what kind of fancy patterns they can make. Uh, but it, it is pretty cool. And even, even like using this in your print somehow, like maybe, maybe if you printed um, a transparent material with this infill and lit up the bottom. That could look pretty cool. Uh, uh, calls it This is a
very good beginner material. It's very easy to print with. One side is, it's not the strongest material, so like I showed earlier or any. Just so you know, the meeting's being recorded. So there's, there's also a number of flexible materials out there. Um, this printer is a little tricky to print with that kind of stuff because you can see right here, the motor is going to go all through this white tube before it gets to the nozzle that melts it. So if it's flexible, it's going to basically jam up in the tube a little bit. Um, it's not impossible, it's just really hard with this printer. So if you guys want to try that, you're gonna really need to do Uh, and then and there's Um,
Probably most are, but you can, there is a large amount of uh, training. <laughs> All you gotta do is put it on the SD card, and then down, down here, you just insert that. Make sure it's the right way up. I don't have a picture. That unfortunately, but it's all it's a pretty simple interface here. You've got a knob to scroll through different options. Um, so prepare and then preheat. It's a good idea to preheat it first because it, it, it will actually just heat up if you print it from a file, but if you preheat it, you're going to make sure everything's reach a nice consistent temperature. Because sometimes if you, if you just let the heat go, uh, the edge is just a little cold. <coughs> so you enter your card, preheat it, and there's a little readout here. Let me picture that on the screen. You guys can come back. Yeah. Oh, no. Why is this taking so long? Here we go. Control panel on it looks like. Just so I so And then this is the bed temperature here. That's the preset. That's what it is currently. Uh, that's pretty much all you need to know before you start printing. The rest tells you, like, this is where the print nozzle is, which doesn't really matter that much. Uh, this percentage bar is start printing. That'll start computing. Uh, and this just tells you that it has an SD card. So I think the bed should be pretty level. So I'm just gonna I'll probably get the lights back on. Yeah, for this. Yeah. yeah. So that's just um, finishing the finishing heating up there now, making sure everything's steady, nice steady temperature. And it should come to life and start printing any second now. I noticed the blue stick there earlier, and someone said that you before about the blue stick on the bids. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to get something to stick. Yeah. Um, okay. Don't know uh, who's I. Like, I was to just slip. Ladder up a blue stick, but it works. So now you see it's pretty print there now. It's pretty well, memorized. I hope I did it right. Oh, I <laughs> no, I, I think you did it just fine. I should have had you look at it. Oh, this one. On the inside, it's just there. 
So that's not being right. printed with a rag. Yeah. No, just directly out of the bed. If anyone wants to, can come up and take a look at this. <laughs> so if you're not using a rag, would the glue stick be a good idea? Yeah. Um, this one I didn't use a glue stick at all. It seems to be sticking fine. Okay. I think it's actually a little close to the bed over here. Last thing I'll, I'll go over before we leave is um, bed level. It's a little out of level, but it's still fine. So we're going to report the progress here. So 0% right there. Yeah. Um, and this is the last time. Oh, okay. This is an eight hour. Yeah, so it'll probably be 0% for a while. For a while. For a while. For a while. Maybe we'll get the one percent. So I, I guess there's a part to try to build the levels that won't take too much time. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of settings. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes around the edge uh, by default every three times. Yeah, it's making the wall. But you could set that down and just walk. That would break a lot faster. Yeah, it's a little weak. Yeah, bring it. Yeah. So let's do it. Uh, that is called the insert. Um, and all that does is just make sure the material is falling properly. Um, and that's what this is as well. It purges the nozzle first just to make sure everything is falling. Um, so the actual shape of the It's filling in the base there now. Yeah. yeah. So we'll do this first layer of first, the first object here, and then it'll go over here and start doing the first layer of the Oh, yeah. 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 She yeah. 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 It's probably going to happen. But you could, one thing that's actually pretty good is that core of advanced technique, I guess. You can take out the water and remove the material and start it again. And then you'll have a color change halfway up. Or, Another cool thing. Yes, yes. This person made this green printed sphere as a Christmas gift for their siblings. And he put like money to the side. So they would have to like soft, really hot. Even the same thing in bed, like, you might see these pretty nice things. Especially if you're going to take them on the most great on a single school. Yeah, most are, but a lot of them are becoming more and more common that have multiple materials. Some of them go through the same extruder and they just have like a tower on the back. And then there's one. Just to make sure the net is working that way. So there are, this is one of the reasons why it's like it's so obvious. Shallow pool of liquid, and it's just pulling this big part out. 
Baby steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the workshop. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that's anywhere between, like, they have, like, I mean, anywhere between, like, people 